so what have we got for you today? Well, the mirror has splashed on the fact that now Matt Hancock has lost in the I'm a Celebrity Jungle. Local Tories in his West Suffolk constituency would also like him to lose his job as their MP. Now, arguably, he was the most brazen campmate since Katie Price, perhaps more brazen, and therefore able to face the challenges without a moment's self-doubt or squealing. Now, the former health secretary did make it as far as the final three. He was beaten by the pretty bloke of Hollyoaks and the lioness. But then it must be said, Alison, the jungle spiders and cockroaches weren't up for the vote, were they? So we don't know how he'd have compared against them, do we? No, that's very true. I mean, it does seem quite interesting how he did get to the third. I was sitting there watching it last night, thinking, how on earth has this come about? But it's, it seems quite interesting. Apparently, there was a big TikTok campaign. Um, so lots of young people were voting. Um, in, in that, it, So even my um, 13-year-old son had said to me about two weeks ago, oh, um, Matt Hancock's really nice, isn't he? And I couldn't quite understand where this line of thinking was coming from. And then I realised it was TikTok that obviously got inside his head. Ah, so, yeah, yeah, he's just got a few memes going and suddenly starts being a bit more... Uh, appears yeah. in our social media and then there's also a funny moment where um he'd hung his t-shirt up um as if to dry but it was the bit where it had telephone number on on which people can vote through and then mike tindall went and covered it up so clearly a politician to his very core he took every opportunity to get extra votes <laughs> please vote for me please vote for me yes um, now what did you think of Matt Hancock everybody did you watch the show did you steer clear of it on principle um there he is being incredibly creepy and weird with a lady <laughs> who is very shortly going to start realizing he's there and move away from him and put a handbag in between her and him there you go um we've had that clip on the show a few times it's before so it's freaky and odd, uh, which Matt Hancock arguably is a bit as are most politicians but it's it's quite amazing really that Someone who was broadly, I suppose it's fair to say, quite loathed at the start of all this. He managed to get to the final, but perhaps the fact that he did that was because he hogged all the screen time. He just kind of sucked it all up, didn't he, with the with the trials and everything else. Yes, and, so I, and I suppose he did do a lot. Of, he did do a lot of trials, and actually, looking at him in isolation in the jungle, he was kind of okay. He was sort of team player. He was a little bit kind of geeky and embarrassing like in that clip you had with the woman but sort of slightly more what's how do you sort of almost like a bit of a kind of a, a joke character rather than anybody who was like seriously awful and nasty mm. and um I think possibly seen in isolation um it was probably okay it's when you see him in the full context of of what he did perhaps during Covid that it it's a slightly fuller picture yeah maybe that's just you know being an okay sort of a bloke but a bit nerdy is maybe not the best person to run the health service so I have to say and you know obviously this is his personal life but I did also think when he came out and then hugged his uh, girlfriend um I mean that yeah, obviously great moment of reconciliation for uh, for them but I couldn't help but think of they've got I think between them is it four, five, six children between them on the other side of the world. I wonder what they were thinking if they were watching those uh, pictures of their parents with somebody who's not their other parent who's yeah. done all this. But that's maybe a bit too censorious of me, but it, without doubt was the first thing I thought when I was flaunting their relationship on national television. Yeah, they arguably won't probably have had enough time to get things <clears throat> sorted out yet to be a blended family, I think is the yes. phrase. So um, it's probably a bit uh, rough and ready for them, I should have thought. Um, but you know, he, he keeps... And Mike Holden agrees with me. Imagine, Imagine his wife your children, says Mike. I just thought, I mean, of course relationships go wrong and of course people, people start up new relationships. But do you need to flaunt it in that way in front of those that are hurting as a result of it? Yeah, if you've got a bit of, of self-awareness, perhaps you would Ooh. say, I'll see you at the hotel afterwards. Yes. Yes. Kind of thing. Yes. Um, now, he did want to say that he wanted to go in there to show how human he was. Sue says, sack him now. He should have been working. But he also went in there to show how, how not being an MP he was. Of course, that happened. Jean Ann says, it's private life is his own affair. I or you wouldn't like people interfering in our business. He was great in get me out of here. Some people did warm to him during there. But Alison, call me a cynic if you like. Do you think he was the most bothered about being made to look like he has thoughts and feelings because that will help him as a politician 
or because it would help him when he's accused of seeding care homes with a deadly virus at the public inquiry that is looming on the horizon? Um, well, I mean, that's a really interesting point. And I, I can see that maybe you're thinking that perhaps he uh, wants to look good when he gets public inquiry. However, part of me almost thinks, does he actually care about any of that stuff? Does it just sort of all the stuff that's a little bit uh, awkward just washes right over his head? And he's just thinking about, you know, am I, am I going to be, can I find a job as a, a celebrity? I mean, obviously, he's going to have some really, really difficult questions to answer when it does come to public inquiry. And you would like to think that anybody with a, a, a moral compass would be terrified about those. Um, but, uh, but actually, does he consider that? But I think it's quite interesting. A lot of comments coming through are people who did quite like him. And I think that's absolutely fine because he came across as quite a likable person. Yeah. But, but the point it's, is, when he was in the role as health secretary, it didn't really matter with his, and it shouldn't really matter with his likable person. It should matter about whether he's competent, whether he took the right decisions that kept people alive. And yeah. that's where he's been able to fudge it. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I, I've watched a few of the early ones that I did find impressive, actually, was that when or I kind of understood why he was doing it, was that he went into those trials, you know, burying himself in a hole in the ground and lying there with snakes and everything else. Sean Walsh was screaming like an idiot. Yeah. He just went straight through and no bother. Yeah. That's because he lacks any self doubt. He doesn't have fear. He just goes, "Yeah, no. fine, no bother." And that's how he dealt. That was the problem with the pandemic. That was how he dealt with everything. And it's kind I of. I mean, that was you to be unkind as well. I mean, he's sort of quite. Um, he's a little bit Tim Nice, but did isn't he? Do you remember the Far Show sketch? In that he's he doesn't seem to be troubled by much sort of like sort of over analysis of any situation. He's just sort of quite a nice, likable kind of guy. But which is fine, but not in a position of power. No, exactly. Don't. Why would yeah. you? Do, we all know someone who's a nice, likable guy in the pub, yes. but maybe a bit odd. But yes. you wouldn't necessarily put them in charge of the country. Now, uh, KL says, if you're an MP and Parliament is sitting and you're getting paid for it, it's your job to represent your constituents in that hour of need. And constituents have never needed as much help as they do now due to 12 years of the incompetence, which Matt Hancock was complicit in. This man shouldn't have been anywhere near this show. And he certainly shouldn't be allowed to continue in his job. He's calculated and he knew exactly what he was doing, as did his PR team. The whole saga was a slap in the face and then some more, which we can't include on the quote. But this is the thing. He's got a PR team, Alison, yeah, and he doesn't yeah, have I mean, a government I mean, department anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's the point. I mean, regardless of whether he's a nice guy or some people think he's a nice guy, some people don't think he's a nice guy, I mean, that's fine, you know, and he's probably, like, human, like he says. But the point is he was getting paid all this time to be doing a job. That's like you or me or anybody else who's watching today <laughs> Who's got a job? Just saying. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, I'm just going off. Not this isn't my annual leave because I've already had my annual leave because they've already had their summer holidays and their recesses and the rest of it. This is during work time. Um, I will be going off for three weeks. And don't worry though, I'm all on top of my constituency work, which clearly he wasn't because he was out of contact with the rest of the country. So that's just a basic bit of not doing your job properly. So yeah, um, I'd love to. I'd love to see what would happen, Alison, if you decided you wanted to go into a reality show for three weeks and just said, "Right, I'm off now. Bye." And you <laughs> didn't say goodbye. It's appeared in the jungle on the telly one day. The bosses at, at Reach would go. Yeah, I'd be, I would be out of a job. I would, you know, I, I would be out of a job because you just can't do that. And I know there have been other um, industries where people have been out of a job as well as going on something like that, and then um, and not sort of staying in advance. That's what they were doing. So. Um, and it's also there's something sort of peculiar about politics where they kind of think that's OK, whereas the rest of us, not only would we be in real trouble if we did it, we wouldn't even consider doing it in the first place because no. because we know we'd be in trouble. Exactly. And Warehouse workers, like, shop workers, workers waitresses. Yeah. yeah. They clearly yeah. don't regard what they do as something that has to be played by the rules, mm. which is strange, isn't it? Exactly. Now, get into the comments. What do you think about Matt Hancock? Do you think what he did was reasonable? Do you think it was a fair enough and a good thing to have done? Did you warm to him? Did you hate him more by the end of it? Let us know. Michelle says Nadine Dorries did TV reality show. She did the same programme and she didn't get this amount of hostility. She totally did. But I still can't stand what he stands for. Never trust a Tory. Um, there was one we just had which was taken down from Jill. Can we have if the chap fed? Yeah, the Jill one was quite there. interesting. In that was interesting. Let's have Jill's comment. He, he, was, Jill. he was reading off a script. He never made the rules. But the point is, unfortunately, he did make the rules. He literally he signed. 
So he signed the secondary legislation, Jill, which created... But, and, and, I don't think, and no one's saying that those rules were easy to make. They're incredibly, incredibly difficult to make at a time of incredible um, pressure. Um, but I think we already know from what has come out during that period that huge mistakes were made. Um, and I don't even know whether you can call them mistakes in some ways because I think they knew what they were doing was dangerous and going to put lives at risk, but they chose to go with it anyway. Um, and, I mean, that's come out from people that were in the room at the time. Um, and I think we're going to see so much of that when it gets to the COVID inquiry that people are going to be quite quite shocked. Yeah, well, we'll have to see, won't we? What do you think is going to come out of the COVID inquiry, everybody? Get into the comments. Do, where do you think Matt Hancock can go from here? Mike says, the masked singer surely beckons. I can't see Strictly taking him. It would ruin their show. I don't want to see him doing Ed Balls on Strictly. Thank you very much. But going on I'm a Celebrity might certainly might help his future career and earning prospects if he does lose out in politics. And there were reports that his girlfriend has been holding talks with people about exactly that sort of thing while he was in the jungle, though it's been denied by Hancock's spokesman. But here he is, just a normal backbencher with zero staff, but apparently his own spokesman. And this time he doesn't have a government department to defend, uh, just his own terribly bad choices. So he really is a celebrity now, which he wasn't probably when he went in the jungle, but he's come out exactly what it said on the side of the tin. But fame is a very fickle game, Alison. Do you think he has what it takes to play that that game well? Um, well, I just think it's, with, even, if, even if supposing he did, it's a really hard thing to sustain if you make your money out of reality TV because there's a sort of a relatively small number of shows that you can go on. Um, he's now done I'm a Celebrity. He's going into SAS Who Dares Wins or something, which has already been filmed. Um, so that was filmed, I think, during the Tory party conference and goes on TV in the new year. Um, and, I mean, how many more of these shows can you do, each with sort of diminishing returns, each with a smaller paycheck? Um, each with a sort of slightly greater dent to your credibility. And where does it all end? Oh, big so if, you, uh, after, if I was advising you, <laughs> because after you've done all this, you can't then sort of recreate yourself as some great sort of intellect who's going to write books on, you know, how to manage a pandemic or how to do... You've, you've busted your flush by that point. And where does that, where does that take you? Um, and I think he's put taking himself down a very narrow route because with a, it's rather... Every time he does another one of these things, he's cutting off his options to be regarded as a credible person. Um, I'll be intrigued to see where he is in 10 years' time. Yeah, Maybe writing romantic fiction like Nadine Dorries, Maybe. or perhaps like Katie Price and Kerry Katona on mm. OnlyFans, which is, does seem to be really ever-decreasing. What a horrible yes, thing. Although, you know, it currently pays quite well, so, you know, there's that option. <laughs> if, you, if you start selling yourself, eventually you end yeah, up... Yeah, that is the problem. Where if you haven't got a if you haven't got a lie, if you haven't got a moral line, then then it's only ever gonna collapse. Yeah, it's gonna go a bit hairy, isn't it? Now, Christine says, what about his famous dyslexia charity that never got a mention? Well, Christine, it got three mentions. Uh, one of them in his exit interview, but only two during the show. And one of his uh, much vaunted reasons for going on I'm a Celebrity was to raise awareness about dyslexia, which he suffers from. But he only mentioned it these two times. And one of those times is when he was asked to um, do some anagrams. And he said we couldn't because the letters are already mixed up in his head because of the dyslexia. Now, I'm not sure we didn't already know that about dyslexia. I don't think that raised much awareness at all. Um, but he made no mentions whatsoever about a dyslexia bill he's going to be presenting to Parliament and trying to pass into legislation in the next few weeks. But of course now, Alison, without the Tory whip to help him actually get that through, he's not in the, the party machine now. So he's really going to struggle to pass that legislation. Is it the case then that having gone into the jungle to raise awareness about dyslexia he might actually have just kneecapped his own bill about making life better for dyslexics well that's the concern and also the way that um politics works it's about having influence and it's about being able to persuade people and it's about being able to encourage people and within parliament you know to, to, to be able to do that you've got to have credibility and you've got to have 
um, well, access to power. And all he's done is he's had the whip removed from him. So it's his own party that have said, we no longer want you to be one of us. So, so yes, he might be able to put lay down some paperwork and say, look, I did this, just to say that he did it. But is it actually going to change anything? I think there's a risk that it that it may not, which, you know, it would be an amazing thing to to go, um, to help things with people with dyslexia. Um, you know, it's something that affects so many people in this country. Um, but I do worry that maybe it's, it's, like you say, he might have diminished that attempt rather than encouraged it. Yeah, it's not really been beneficial in the long run, I suspect. Well, we'll move on to something else now. But Tony says, done better than your socialist lovies. And I'd imagine he's not bothered in the slightest about his job now. He's made his mark and done exactly what he set out to do. He's been different. Um, I'm not sure which socialist lovies you're talking about. Tony, uh, I, I think there were a couple of socialist lovies in there who probably did a bit better than him because they won. Um, and Jill Scott apparently is set to make millions. I'm not sure that he's going to make quite the same um, unless OnlyFans has changed somewhat since I last had to look at it for work reasons. 